Idling is the number one enemy of fuel conservation. Just one hour of it wastes up to four liters of fuel. Most owner operators and fleet managers no longer need convincing that the single most effective way they can reduce operating costs is to eliminate unnecessary idling. However, choosing an idle reduction system that meets their heating, cooling, and power requirements can be complicated. To make the selection process easier and help you understand the return on investment for the different options, we spoke to Bob Coston, who heads up XTCC, Experts in Transportation Climate Control, based out of Mississauga, Ontario. So the options available to the average trucker are a uh, heater for keeping him warm in his bunk during the winter or an air conditioning system to keep him cool during the summer. And during the time when they're in the sleeper for 10 hours of uh, reset time or in a layover situation, if they're idling their engine, well, they're spending money. But if they've got a bunk heater or an engine heater or an APU or a 12-volt battery-operated air conditioning system, then they've got the solution that they need to shut their truck off and save money and still provide themselves with comfort. Bunk heaters, which cost in the neighborhood of $1,200 to $1,500 installed, are the easiest way to solve the wintertime heating problem for a driver and at the same time have a fast payback because the price of the diesel heater installed compared to the savings it'll make over the life of the five years the heater's in the truck, you'll pay that back in 18 to 22 weeks. So a bunk heater uses a tenth of a liter an hour while it's operating and the truck engine by comparison is three to four liters an hour. So if you look at the cost of diesel fuel on a per liter basis you can see how long it would take you to save the same amount of money as the heater cost. And it's usually less than two to three months in the winter time. But a bunk heater isn't just used in the winter time. People find that they'll start using it in the end of September, October when it gets a little cold and it starts to get a little rainy and it's just not comfortable sleeping in a bunk at say 65 or 60 degrees with a lot of humidity. And they'll continue to use that bunk heater throughout the year right into the middle of April or May. So the time frame for a bunk heater in the northern part of North America is usually six to seven months of the year. It's just a nice creature feature that keeps your seats warm, keeps the windows defrosted, and it really doesn't cost that much. And the current draw out of it to, on the truck starting batteries is so negligible that it never ever compromises the startability of the truck. The um, other reason people idle their engines is because they're concerned about startability in the morning. You get up in northern Canada and some of the prairies, the temperatures drop so low that drivers are concerned about getting that truck going in the morning so they won't shut it off. But in all but the most extreme circumstances, you can put a 12-volt fuel-fired coolant heater on the engine, mounted underneath the hood, and it's like a little boiler. It typically just circulates the coolant in the engine back through the heater and then back to the engine all the time that it's running. And it usually only will run for about two hours prior to startup time, prior to when the driver's departing. He sets a timer and then it tells the heater to come on in advance of the time they need to leave. And by the time the departure uh, time occurs, the heater has usually got the engine up to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit and in some cases as much as 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So even on a minus 20 degree day, the engine still thinks it's July by the time the driver gets to turn the key. So startability can be handled by a, an engine heater and they cost in the neighborhood of $1,800 to $2,000. And the heat within the truck can be handled by a little forced air furnace that costs between $1,300 and $1,500. But if you add up all the idle time that these two situations address, well, the payback on both of those heaters would still be in the neighborhood of a year. Well, bunk heaters and engine heaters would be a good wintertime solution. They're not a 12-month-of-the-year solution, and we still have heat in the summertime to address as well. So the industry over the last decade has started to really make use of auxiliary power units as a 12-month-of-the-year winter and summertime solution. And while heaters may only weigh 35 pounds all in installed, APUs can weigh as much as 400 pounds and they require frame rail space. So there are some logistics issues in where do we put the APU and how much weight can the truck hold against what it's maxed out at. 
and some of these uh, concerns need to be looked at when we're considering an APU. But the benefits of an APU is A, it's a 12 month of the year solution. B, it charges the truck starting batteries while it's running. It can preheat the diesel engine while it's running. It provides 110 volt power for household appliances like a microwave and a computer and other things the driver might need on the road because he's living in his truck. And it's so now it's becoming more like an RV application. And um, they can be programmed so they start on their own. They start when the engine temperature falls to below a set minimum and when the battery voltage starts to go down on the truck starting batteries the APU can come on and recharge the batteries and it's kind of like babysitting the entire truck. Their cost however sometimes is a, an issue because they're as much as ten thousand to twelve thousand dollars installed. However they do provide a all year round solution and they do offer more in the form of charging the batteries and uh, uh, 110 volt power for appliances within the cab. However, with uh, APUs and California laws and a lot of these anti-idling um, emissions legislation that's going on, uh, the cost to put an exhaust system on an APU that matches that of a 2010 truck is about $2,500 to $3,000, more money, because the APU's exhausts has to be the same values as what the main engine of the truck's exhaust is. So that has made APUs in places like California unacceptable because they can't run them unless they have an exhaust after treatment system installed. And as a result, the industry is now turning towards 12 volt air conditioning solutions uh, to complement the heaters that we just talked about. So a lot of trucks now are adapting a battery, uh, auxiliary battery powered 12 volt air conditioning system that's integrated into the heaters so that it's like a climate control year round solution. Um, 12 volt air conditioning is quiet, it's clean, the batteries weigh as much in some cases as an APU, you can have as much as 400 pounds installed batteries, 12 volt air conditioning all in. But the advantage of it is that it meets all the emissions requirements across North America and it's environmentally clean and requires next to no maintenance. Now OEMs are offering them more and more in the last couple of years. You've seen more uh, climate control battery operated systems coming on the market. They almost always use a diesel fired bunk heater as the source of heat and an engine heater for the source of preheat on the engine, so it's sort of like all of these technologies merged into one offering from the OEM. It's all integrated into the chassis. But in every case, battery power is a major concern, and they usually need four deep cycle gel cell batteries. And the runtime on a 12 volt air conditioning system at best is 10 to 12 hours before the whole system needs to be recharged. Now, an APU can run and run and run as long as you've got diesel fuel. And a heater can run and run and run as long as you've got diesel fuel, but a battery operated system, a climate control system like that, has only got a run time as long as the battery capacity allows. So as the heat goes up and the humidity goes up, the run time of the 12 volt air conditioning system suffers accordingly. A 12 volt air conditioning system will cost between $5,000 to $7,000 to $10,000, depending on the capacity of the system you get and where you're running in North America. So the comparison of an all-in 12-volt system to that of an APU is it's about a wash, weight-wise and dollar-wise. The only thing is the APU requires maintenance on an ongoing basis and isn't certified in California without a scrubber, and the 12-volt systems can go anywhere they want. So, if you have a 12 volt air conditioning system and you have a 12 volt bunk heater system, it still doesn't address your need to have a microwave and a, com and a computer and a TV perhaps in the cab. So we install inverters that hook up to the auxiliary battery, char uh, battery bank and then provide 110 volt power for up to 20 minutes, a half an hour for cooking uh, in a microwave and can run all a TV and a computer all night long. So with a 12 volt battery based system, you can still have heat, air conditioning, and uh, auxiliary power in your cab for household appliances. But it's all getting its 
source from that auxiliary battery bank. Many of the people selling this kind of technology offer leasing programs that can go from one to two to three years with a 10% buyout. And when you do that 10% buyout, it becomes a business expense. So all the monthly payments can be deducted from your revenue stream as a cost of doing business. And at the time of the conclusion of the lease, when you take your 10% buyout and convert it to an asset, now you're only showing a capital gain of 10% of the original value of the system. A bunk heater, it's pretty easy. Run it once a month, all through the summer, for 10 or 15 minutes. And with the coolant heater, it's the same thing. Run it once a month through the summer, and let it warm up and circulate and go through a cycle or two and then shut it down. And the reason being is that there are seals and shafts and pumps, and they all should be lubricated throughout the summertime when it's basically a dormant period for the heater. And if heaters are let uh, go for six or seven months and then the driver pushes the button, sometimes even gravity has taken the fuel and pulled it right back to the tank and as they keep pushing the button then it won't fire up and then they eventually show up here. But circulating the coolant, running the bunk heater once a month for 10 minutes, that'll give you as much long life as you can possibly get. Now, after two or three years, you're going to have to decarbon the flame chamber and perhaps change a glow plug and a little fuel filter screen. But in, in the context of the life of a heater over five years, that's about it. Auxiliary power units for maintenance are a different story than heaters and 12 volt air conditioning because they have a diesel engine inside that box on the frame. And that diesel engine has filters and belts and oil that all need to be changed on a regular basis. And Many people neglect that aspect of the APU because they have to open up a lid and check the oil and it's only got two and a half liters of oil in it. So oil is a really critical factor to an APU's life and they should be maintained even more so than what the truck's main engine is. And the other thing is they're running like 10 inches off the ground. And in Canada with all the salt and road dirt and everything, they need to be cleaned out quite a bit and we need to spray crown rust proofing or another kind of rust preservative on all the connections wherever we can see them on a regular basis throughout the winter. Battery operated air conditioning systems on the other hand have very little maintenance associated with them other than the batteries. So if a person knows how to maintain a battery and change a battery and the charging system on the truck is maintained so that they get fully recharged during the driving leg after a, a night on, on the side of the road the so battery operated air conditioning systems are basically maintenance free. Drivers today need to save every cent they can. And so do trucking companies need to save every cent they can. And when you can do something as simple as installing a heater or an air conditioning system and it then the math says that you're going to pay it back in anywhere from three months to two years, depending on the system you buy. Well then all that fuel that you would have burnt is now hauling freight for which you get paid. And to my mind, not only is it a, a better thing for your engine and a better thing for your, for your bottom line, it's a better thing for the environment. Lodwick Transport operates 200 trucks out of Mississauga hauling temperature controlled freight across North America. They have an award winning idle reduction program. We spoke with company president Jerry Lodwick to understand how they went about implementing their program, how they keep it going, and the impact it has had on his operation. Since the later 1980s, our trucks have been governed, and um, we've always had a pretty good record of fuel mileage. I'd say we started getting a little bit more serious about it back in 2000, uh, when we implemented a new uh, pay package, and at that point in time, we introduced our um, our bonus for idling and, and MPG. Well, initially, we were trying to lower our MPGs by three tenths of a mile per gallon and uh, we have accomplished that in our first stage and since then we've also tried to lower our miles per gallon by two tenths of a, a mile per gallon which we've also accomplished. Uh, initially when we implemented our bonus system or our, actually when we implemented our APUs our idle time was at 50 percent for the fleet average and since then uh, as of today in the winter time our fleet average is 27 percent. Initially when we started to try and lower our 
anti-air idling, we wanted to help the drivers out and so we implemented optimized idle from Detroit Diesel. And since then we've moved into bunk heaters as well as the TriPack, Thermal King TriPack APU to help lower the idling and, and gain mile per gallon efficiencies. I think we've been pretty happy with it. Uh, we've estimated that payback has been under a year and uh, the drivers are very happy with them. And we've actually since started looking at the next platform that we're going to move to. Uh, right now we're testing the Climacab system, which is a totally battery operated system. Idle time here is monitored through our sensor track system, through the Shaw satellite system. And we've set uh, different programs for each driver uh, to, to try and make it as fair as possible. Our city drivers, of course, is a very small portion of what we do, so they're bonused on a per hour basis, but the bonus system was geared towards highway drivers, uh, which is the largest percentage of our business. And we tried to make it fair by recognizing the fact that each truck performs a little bit differently. So in the winter time, we had a 30% target initially before implementing the uh, APUs, and we had a 25% summer target. Um, and since then we've moved that down to about 10 percent because of the APUs but we would recognize and change the mile per gallon attainable per truck based on a square hood application or based on uh, uh, an EGR engine versus a natural engine. I think if I was to consult with a fleet and they wanted some advice on getting onto an anti-idling program I think you should talk to your drivers first find out what it is they're doing, what applications they are currently using, why do they need idle time, and then find out how you can uh, find out how you can implement a program that will best suit the needs of the driver. And if you get driver buy-in, you're going to get a better participation and you're going to get better results. What's next for Lodwick? I think we'd, our average idle time at 27% is probably a pretty good number, but I think we can do better. Uh, we'd like to increase our APU uh, count on our trucks and further decrease that to about 10%. And we're looking at uh, different systems like the Climacad battery operated system. Anything that we can bring in to help the driver achieve his goals and, and save us money and reward, reward him as well. As a truck operator today, you need to focus on saving every cent you can. Installing an idle reduction system such as a bunk or engine heater or an APU or 12 volt air conditioning system can be a critical business investment. As XTCC's Bob Costin would tell you, all that fuel that you would have burnt is now hauling freight for you for which you get paid.